Welcome once again to Noir Alley, where we specialize in those darkly stylish movies known as film noir. I'm your host, Eddie Muller. As we continue TCM's Memorial Day weekend marathon, I've got for you the first screen adaptation of a novel by one of the finest mystery writers of her generation, Dorothy B. Hughes. It's The Fallen Sparrow, produced at RKO in 1943, starring John Garfield and Maureen O'Hara. Missouri-born Dorothy Hughes had already published volumes of poetry and nonfiction when her first mystery, The So Blue Marble, was published in 1941. She cited Raymond Chandler, author of The Big Sleep and Farewell, My Lovely, as an inspiration. Her follow-up, however, was more in the mold of two other influential writers, Eric Ambler and Graham Greene. Like their novels, The Fallen Sparrow was a suspense story set against a background of geopolitical intrigue. In fact, before the term film noir came into vogue, critics described The Fallen Sparrow as a spy film, which, frankly, is way off the mark. Garfield plays John Kit McKittrick back home in 1940 after fighting for the Republicans against nationalist dictator Francisco Franco in the Spanish Civil War. In true noir fashion, Kit is determined to avenge the suspicious death of the comrade who saved his life overseas. The Spanish Civil War, which began in 1936, was a microcosm of the world's political conflicts during the 30s, especially the clash between communism and fascism. In fact, America's ambassador to Spain, Claude Bowers, called it the dress rehearsal for World War II. The United States officially held a non-interventionist stance during the war, but almost 3,000 U.S. volunteers, mostly artists and blue-collar workers, calling themselves the Abraham Lincoln Brigade, fought against the conservative nationalists who were supported by military aid from Nazi Germany and fascist Italy. The nationalists won the war in 1939, leading to 36 years of Franco's fascist rule. When RKO bought Hughes's novel in 1942, World War II was no longer a dress rehearsal. And although the U.S. was no longer a bystander in the battle against fascism, the government opted to keep cordial relations with Spain, which declared itself neutral in the war raging right next door. Because of that, some RKO executives were opposed to making The Fallen Sparrow, fearful of a political backlash. They prodded producer Robert Fellows to fictionalize the story's political players. But Fellows stuck to Hughes's story, even after several potential leading men, including James Cagney, Cary Grant, and Randolph Scott, begged off because of the film's liberal bias. Not John Garfield. Once he expressed interest, RKO swapped the rights to two dormant properties for his services. The actor would get some of the best reviews of his young career for this performance, in which his typical toughness is offset by a vulnerability instilled by two torturous years in a prison camp. Although RKO had bought the novel as a starring vehicle for Maureen O'Hara, it's Garfield who ended up dominating the picture. Aiding his performance is the direction of Richard Wallace, the shadow-filled camera work of Nicholas Musaraka, and the editing of Robert Wise, who'd make his directing debut at RKO the following year with The Curse of the Cat People. Although they all do exemplary work in this film, it's the score, composed by Roy Webb, that earned The Fallen Sparrow its sole Oscar nomination. The cast of deeply dubious characters includes Walter Slezak, Patricia Morrison, Martha O'Driscoll, and a few faces recognizable from their later work on television. You'll know him when you see him. Maureen O'Hara may have been made for Technicolor, but I don't think she ever looked more beautiful than she does in this film. Despite that, the film belongs entirely to John Garfield. But here is the big question. Which one of them is the fallen sparrow?